Hanlei Ladakh, 15,000 feet high, among the harshest, driest spots in the world. Not a blade of grass grows in the highlands, and yet it remains the cradle of rich culture and tradition, where the cold sun burns and people are still simple, honest folk, yet warm and hospitable to the core. By day, Hanlei is a bleak and merciless land, cold and desolate. By night, it becomes a grandstand to the universe. And now, a home to the highest telescope in the world, the Himalayan Chandra Telescope. Hanlei, a culmination of the efforts of the scientists, technicians and administrators of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Chandra is today's chapter mark in a long search for truth that lies out there somewhere, a search that eclipses time and tradition from thousands of years. Ancient India had a rich tradition of scientific observations, albeit with the unaided eye. Every century had its share of astronomers and mathematicians who enhanced scientific and astronomical knowledge right up to the advent of modern astronomy in the 18th century. In 1786, William Petrie set up an observatory with a small telescope in Madras. His successor, Michael Topping, obtained support for the Madras Observatory to carry out astronomical studies, and accordingly it was taken over by the East India Company. From here began the story of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. A hundred years later, the Madras Observatory was shifted to Kodai Canal. After a 60-year period of remarkable contributions in solar physics, nighttime astronomy had a rebirth when Professor Vainu Bapu became the director in 1960 and later founded the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. The facilities of the Institute spread over centres in Kodai Canal, Kavalur, Gauri Bidanur and Bangalore. He was instrumental in setting up the 2.3 metre telescope at Kavalur, now named after him. For over two centuries, the institution has nurtured its ethos of being a premier institution of scientific inquiry. This tradition continues unbroken as we once again look up into the skies through the two-metre Chandra telescope at Hanlei. Before the decision was taken to set up the telescope at Hanlei, experts headed out to various locations, carrying out extensive analysis and tests. Tests to check critical areas like the amount of snowfall, rainfall and clarity of the skies. It was also required that the location be at a considerable distance from any inhabited area. Coupled with a study of satellite maps and topographical sheets, the search zeroed down to Hanlei in eastern Ladakh. Far from any kind of civilization, and therefore unpolluted, this unspoiled landscape had the advantage of being above the tree line, making the conditions suitable for astronomical activity. The very characteristics of high altitude and very cold temperatures that make Hanlei an excellent site of optical and infrared astronomy posed great challenges in setting up such an observatory. These conditions also made it necessary that a communication channel be created from a more accessible place to the site of the telescope. This facility is now functioning at Crest in Hosakote the new campus of Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Karnataka. Hanlei is now accessible through satellite communication system to anybody from Bangalore. Scientists need not go to Hanlei to operate the Chandra telescope for observations. Another challenge is related to generating electricity at this extremely remote and dry place. We have established two solar power stations. Each is capable of giving 30 kilowatts of peak power. We believe that this is one of the highest places where such a large amount of power is being generated using solar cells. A high quality of optics has been achieved through a special material that is an ultra-low expansion ceramic 
that has been produced by Corning of USA. Its specifications are such that it has zero expansion with an extremely low uncertainty. Also, it is ensured that the telescope is never out of focus. To keep the telescope structure lighter and easily maneuverable, it is an altazimuth mount has been preferred. Since establishing the infrastructure facilities at Hanle, like the solar power, the communication link, the uh, liquid nitrogen plant, housing the telescope in a dome, it is in itself an onerous task. We de decided to give uh, the fabrication of the telescope to an American company called EOST. And the telescope has been manufactured in Arizona by this company to our specifications where we could go and uh, work with them to uh, see the uh, construction of the telescope fully done. And that has been now been installed at Hanley. It's really heartening to see the enormous amount of effort put in by our staff, the engineering and technical and other administrative, to really be working in these harsh conditions where a bitter cold and the, where the oxygen content is very low. The efficiency of working is almost one third of the normal. Is uh, this whole task of establishing the observatory and get the telescope to perform at this. Uh, see the first light and at this level in a period of three years is really remarkable. There is a certain amount of exclusivity that the telescope enjoys on account of its location. The Hanley site is 78 degrees east longitude. There is no high quality world class facility available in this part of the world unless one goes west to La Palma in the Canary Islands which is one quarter of the globe away. On the east, also, the situation is similar. The nearest site with equivalent facilities is in Siding Spring, Australia, which is again another 90 degrees in to the east. This gap between the two facilities has also left a gap in the skies. The Hanley location fills the huge gap. The study of different astronomical events requires different strategies. Some night sky events may have to be observed by facilities in a sort of relay across the globe for observing time-varying phenomenon. Like the phenomenon of gamma ray bursts, these bursts happen all the time during the day and night. These are sources in the sky which emit an intense gamma radiation Energy that measures about one minute of this phenomenon is equivalent to one crore suns radiating for approximately 300 years. That is truly an awesome amount of energy. Also, this extraordinary source emits a faint afterglow in visible light. By knowing the precise location of the source using the X-ray afterglow, the optical afterglow has been studied from Hanley. Although performance tests of the telescope are going on presently, Chandra Telescope still managed to observe and photometrically follow a gamma ray burst source. We hope exciting new discoveries would be a routine affair at IAO as new instruments get installed and new facilities are developed at Hanley, one of the best sites in the world.